morning and welcome to this month's interactive distance training. My name is Lawrence Shepard. I'm a product technical specialist here at Meritor and we're going to talk today about air dryers and some of the issues we face with uh, purge value valve failures. Okay, I'd like to start off first just talking a little bit about one of our uh, online features and that's our literature on demand website. Uh, you may not all be aware of this website, but it's a great resource for you to use. Um, the web link is just up there in red in the left corner of the screen. Uh, this website has every publication that Meritor has. So all our parts books, our maintenance manuals, our technical bulletins. And the nice thing about this website is everything that's on there is in a PDF format. So you can go on there and get instant access to something that you might be looking for. Whether it's a question out of a maintenance manual, you can download that maintenance manual and go to the page and look it up. A lot of the uh, literature that's on there is also available in uh, hard copy. All you do is register on the uh, website, order up the literature that you would like, and we will ship it to you, UPS Crown paid. So just a good resource, something that I think you would uh, you know, get good use out of. So let's talk about the air dryer and the air dryer function itself. I mean, the air dryer is there to protect your truck's air system. It protects it from moisture, which could lead to freeze up in the winter time. We protect it from contamination, which leads to valve damage and other product downline that relies on air to operate it, like an automated transmission. We're protecting all of that expensive valving and equipment, and we want to keep that air dryer system perfectly clean. So, I mean, the dryer's main job is to remove moisture and contaminants, which are created while compressing air. Basic function of the air dryer, if we look at it in this, if we talk about the compressor being what we call the loaded stage, which is when it is compressing air, putting air into the system, the airflow goes in through the dryer inlet up through the sides of that canister and pushes down through the desk and beads. And that's what's removing the moisture from those beads or from the air. And hopefully we got nice dry clean air coming out of the outlet. When the compressor goes into its unloaded stage, so it's stopped pressurizing, it's stopped compressing air, a signal is sent to that air dryer, which is going to tell it now it's go into its purge cycle. Simply it draws air back through the uh, outlet, it does a blast of air up through those beads, driving all that, those water molecules off the surface of those beads, down the sides of that canister, and out through the purge valve. So again, a very uh, basic system, fairly easy to understand. But what happens is we get problems, especially with the purge valve and sometimes we need to do some diagnostics to, to figure out exactly what's wrong. So if an air dryer leaks from the purge valve during the compressor loaded cycle and it's continuously leaking, then that's going to prevent the system from building up air pressure. It's going to have that uh, compressor run longer and longer and longer and wear it out faster. So we can look at some possible causes here. We can look at one purge valve is frozen open this, of course, normally happens in the winter time when we have cold temperatures. There's moisture that goes through that valve, you know, the purge valve, and it freezes up and just locks it up. So what's the solution to that? Well, one, we need to check, see the heater's working. If it's receiving voltage, if it is working, great. If it's not working, we need to repair it or replace it. If it is working, then we need to look somewhere else. Maybe we need to make sure that the signal line you know, the line that's coming from the governor to the uh, port on the air dryer is free of any water or oil, and it's actually working as well and it's not uh, holding pressure, which could cause that valve to stay open. Debris under the purge valve seat, again, that can happen. It gets pushed through. You can disassemble the purge valve, clean it up, and put it back in. That may correct your issue. On the Wabco air dryers, this is unique to Wabco because they hold their uh, purge valve in with a snap ring. And if that snap ring is not fully seated in the groove, that valve will leak. So the solution, of course, is simple. Just make sure the snap ring is fully 
seeded into the groove and that should correct any issues there. You know, anything in the system keeping the unloader line pressurized. So if we look at that again and we look at the signal line or the, uh, or the unloader line, whatever connected to the port four, you know, if we disconnect it and then the leak stops, then we have pressure in that line and something's causing that pressure. Could be a faulty governor, could be many different things. So again, that's an area that we look at. The air dryer does not purge when the compressor unloads. So we go into that, we don't get that big blast of air coming out. Something's happened. Usually the purge valve is stuck closed. And usually that means we have to replace that purge valve. Normally it's one of those situations that's not repairable. You can't really clean it up. When they get stuck closed, they need to be replaced. But again, replacing a purge valve is not a difficult uh, process. What I'd like to do now is show you how we do a bench test on an air dryer just to make sure it's operating correctly. Now this bench test can be done on the vehicle as well, but a lot of times guys find it easier to take it out and just do it on the bench and make sure our air dryer is pro working properly. What we're going to do is we're going to plug the uh, dryer outlet and uh, then we are going to put a quick connect fitting on the inlet and another quick connect fitting on the governor port. We do that and it's done up. So here, showing live, I have an air dryer, as you can see. I have plugged the discharge, the outlet, quick connect fitting here on the inlet and on the signal port right here. Simply take an airline and pressurize the air dryer. Once your air dryer is completely pressurized, take a second airline and hook connect it to the signal port. Then we put air to it. Really nice purge, blast that's blasting all those water molecules off, and then you can see the air is slowing down. That purge valve is closing. It's finally come to a complete uh, close. So the question is now, you know, should be working? If we want to do a second check, if you want to check it one more time, that's fine. The only thing I recommend: make sure you disconnect the uh, connection from the signal line to let any residual pressure in there out, which just allows that uh, valve to completely seat. And then you could do that again. So we checked our air dryer. Everything's working properly on this bench test. So what else could be causing it? As I said earlier, it could be the governor. Well, again, it's a very simple test you can do to test your governor. You just remove the mounting bolts, move the governor away from the compressor, and then push your foot valve down a few times until you get your tank pressures to about 80 PSI. Then start the engine and let it idle. If air is leaking from the unloader port, the governor's bad. Okay, it should be shut at this point. If it's not leaking, allow the system to build up air until you get the cutoff pressure. Then if air comes out through the unloader port, the governor's working properly. Again, fairly simple and nice, easy way of uh, just doing a quick check on that governor. So now I'd like to talk briefly about cartridges and uh, the difference between what we call our traditional or standard cartridge versus a coalescing cartridge. You know, the standard cartridge originally was there to remove moisture and larger particles or droplets out of, out of the air and clean it up and put it through. But with the new engines today and the, they run at the higher heat levels, we now find we get more aerosol type oil or oil vapors getting into our air systems and being driven down into that air dryer. So we came up with a coalescing type cartridge. And that coalescing cartridge has an extra filter medium in it. And the whole idea of that is to capture the smallest amount of contaminants and also get rid of the oil, okay? 
we want to make sure we get any all the contamination is out of there as clean as we can before it goes down line to our uh, different valves. You know, both cartridges have desiccant beads. Okay, the coalescing has that extra filter medium. But you got to remember, we when we talk about desiccant beads, the desiccant beads are not sponges. They don't absorb the water. Desiccant beads are a certain design shape and size to attract water molecules to the surface of the bead. So as the air travels down through those beads, they attract the water molecules out of that air and they form over the surface of the bead. And, that, so when, and then when we purge and that big blast of air comes back up, it's just taking all, that wa all those water molecules off of the top of those beads. The problem we see today a lot of times is some of these lower cost cartridges that are now out in the marketplace, people are using what we call reclaimed desiccant. So basically they take the, an old cartridge, they cut it open, and then they re-clean clean up those desiccant beads and reuse them. That, but the problem is through pressure changes, you know, through the purge, and, and lose some of their shape and size. And that can cause, you know, those beads become less efficient, all right? So yeah, you can buy the cheaper cartridges, you can use those to reclaim desk and beads, but you're already using a less efficient uh, cartridge. Just be aware and know about that and understand the fact that Meritor only uses new beads in all their cartridges. Every cartridge we sell has new desiccant beads in it. So let's look closely at that coalescing filter. That filter is a multi-layered filter, and as you can see by that picture, where it's dark at the top and still nice and white at the bottom, it's done a good job taking all the oil particulates out of the air. And if you look on the other uh, picture there on your right, that's the bottom of it, and you can see it's still nice and clean and probably has life left in it. Why is it so important to remember to use an oil classic cartridge? Why is it so important that we don't replace one with a standard? If you look at today's trucks where the engines run hotter and we have a tendency to vaporize oil, we need to get that out of the air. They've been standard on Volvo and Max since 2008 and on Freightliner and Western Star since 2010. And today, all heavy truck OEMs mandate the use of oil coalescing air dryer cartridges in their service literature. If an oil coalescing cartridge is not used, warranties for automated manual transmissions will be voided. And not just automated transmission. <clears throat> Other items that use air for their functions can have their warranties voided. So remember that and remember how important an oil coalescing cartridge is. If you're not aware, we're currently running a promotion on you know, our normal air dryer promotion, which takes place this time of every year. It began on July 1st. Okay, we have special promotional pricing out there on 33 parts, and this is available through the end of September. Thanks for joining this month's seminar. Next month's seminar will cover hydraulic brakes. Have a great day.